Hello everyone, my name is Joan. I'm a local celebrity in my city, and it's not that I'm a singer or an actress, I just have the longest nails in the city, because I haven't cut them in over 10 years. Do you want to know why? Then look no further. Do not forget to write your opinion in the comments, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. It all started in my childhood, when I was very young. Have you ever noticed when little kids get their nails cut? They always resist. Do not give in. Do not sit still. Shout that they are in pain. I think it's for a reason. This is really painful and unpleasant. Here you are. Yes, you remember how you cut your nails as a child. I'm sure you were yelling and telling them not to touch it too. And the thought of my mother picking up a pair of scissors made me panic. Am I right? Here I was exactly the same. Of course, I know that this is a part of the care procedure for taking care of me from my mother, but I really could not convey to her that she did it so badly. Every time we came out of the bathroom, my mom would sit me down on the bed and take my hand, and then those nasty pink scissors. She also said that it was for children, special, but as for me, it still hurt. And then my mother began cutting them with passion, and even on the conscience, as if the shorter she makes them, the slower they will grow. Every time I twitched, I would ask my mother to stop, and she would tell me to be patient, and then she would get angry. She made comments, then shouted, then punched me in the head. It wasn't fair. What did I get in return for being able to bear the pain? And then, when I grew up, one day, I took those pink scissors and threw them away. Yes, I just got rid of them. My mother couldn't find them for a long time, and then she bought others. They were similar, but the ones that cut my hair also hurt, so I threw them out too, and then the next ones and the next ones until she realized that I was involved in their disappearances. My mother asked me why I was doing this, and I said I wasn't going to take any more pain. She tried to explain that long nails are not hygienic, ugly, strange, and generally terrible, but I said that I don't care. And then I asked her never to touch my nails again. I promised that I would take care of them myself. My mother argued for a long time, but since I was already older, she agreed. And since that day, I started the story with my nails. I just began to grow them, and they were not ugly. I just went to beauty salons, where I got a manicure without any scissors. I only allowed them to cut off a little with a nail file, so that they were the same length. At first, it was not very noticeable, and even beautiful. I managed to grow my nails up to two centimeters in three months. Of course, sometimes they broke, but it didn't matter. I made different types of nail art. Many masters reached out to my nails to work on them. They were healthy, beautiful, and strong by nature. I was proud of them, not to mention my mother. At school, by the way, it was also not sweet. Very often, my teachers told me to cut them off, but I tried to excuse myself in every possible way. Do you ask about housework? I did it, just with thick gloves and very carefully. It took me three times as long to even vacuum, let alone cook, but I still didn't want to say goodbye to my nails. And every time my mother started talking about them, I just reminded her that if she hadn't cut them so savagely when I was a child, nothing like this would be happening now. It really became my psychological trauma. In this way, first a year passed, then three, then five. My nails had already grown to 20 centimeters, taking into account the filing and damage. They were already twisting at the end, and it was becoming more and more difficult for me to care for them. You have no idea how much effort it sometimes took for me to open the car door, type a message on the phone, open a bottle, put on makeup or wash my face. Sometimes my hand washing took up to 15 minutes, because it takes time to wash each nail. By the way, I also had to give up swimming, because the water made my nails soft and brittle. Over the years, my love for them grew, and I found myself thinking that I don't not cut them because I have painful memories, but because I like them. You probably think that it is terribly uncomfortable to live with such nails, but I could not imagine myself without them. So it took another five years, and my nails grew by about 20 centimeters again. You know, my procedures in the salon, or rather the prices for them, had also increased. You can understand why. The difficulty also lay in the fact that not every beautician could take up the task. Yes, 
Earlier, they lined up to serve me, but now I had to run after them myself, luring them with lots of money. Well, as for how I live among the people around me, this is a separate story. You know, every year I was convinced of only one thing, that all the people, almost all that I met on the way, no matter where, in the store, at the gas station, or even on the street, people would notice my nails. Men, women, old people, children. They all felt it was their duty to express their opinion about them. Some shouted hurtful things, such as, Witch! Not nails, but shovels. I'm going to throw up on her. Someone cut off her claws, otherwise I'll do it myself. The only thing I couldn't understand was why someone was so eager to get into my life. Why did everyone around me feel it was their duty to say something nasty to my back? I believe that everyone has oddities that many people don't understand. But does this somehow prevent us from living? No. But why does it give people the right from the outside to say something about it, who have no idea about the reasons why we do things? At first, I was offended. I also wanted to cut my nails until I realized that I love them myself. Personally, they do not interfere with my life. On the contrary, I can no longer imagine myself without them. So now, I ignore all the negative opinions. My family, friends, and people close to me have long accepted my image. They do not pay attention and protect me from comments. I believe that no one gives us the right to judge another person for something that does not harm anyone else. Seriously, I haven't hurt anyone or defiled anyone with my life, so calm down. Tell me, do you have any oddities? Which ones? Can you imagine that there is a person with the longest arms in the world? This is despite the fact that I am a girl. How am I doing? I'll tell you right away, it's not easy. There are a lot of stories about the most ridiculous situations in my life. Listen further. Put likes and share my story with your friends. I am also waiting for your comments. Can you write your opinion about it? I will be happy to read it. My name is Nicole. I was born in a small, poor village in a developing country. When my parents got married, the whole village was against it because it was considered that my parents had a bad marriage, and all because my father already had a bride in mind, which his family promised him, but he disobeyed and decided to marry the one he loved, that is, my mother. My father's relatives considered my mother not equal to my father, since she was from a very poor family. Although my father wasn't exactly rich either, but it's all so complicated. Dad's family didn't even want to hear about father bringing home a girl they weren't happy about anymore. At first, my parents met in secret. By the way, they met by chance, at a market. My mother then sold vegetables and fruits, and my father went shopping. It was love at first sight. Many did not believe that their relationship would last. My mother came to my father's house in spite of everything and paid a lot for it. She was poorly received, humiliated in every possible way, but she endured everything. And then she and father decided to move out and live separately from everyone. Although my mother hid her resentment, she was worried in her heart, and almost every night, she cried and prayed to God that it would all end soon. But it didn't end. It got worse. Soon, my mother became pregnant, and the stress and nervousness affected her child. That is, me. The birth was terribly difficult. And when I was born, the first thing the doctor said was that the girl's arms were too long. I looked like a monkey, small myself, but my hands were almost up to my knees. If you haven't noticed, then ordinary newborns have short arms and they grow over the years. It was different for me. This moment scared and embarrassed not only my parents, but my grandparents, who didn't even come to see me. They heard about their granddaughter's defect and said that our family was cursed by the ancestors themselves, allegedly because even they didn't want that marriage to happen. That's how I grew up. My parents did not accept my peculiarity positively, but they did not drag me to the doctors, because otherwise I was a normal, healthy baby. By the time I was three years old, I was more or less aware of what was happening around me. I even remember a couple of bright moments when I was getting on the bus, holding onto the handrail, 
and all the people were looking at my hand. I was so embarrassed at the time, I wanted to put it away, put it in my pocket, but I couldn't because it just didn't fit. All my sleeves and gloves were short for me, and for the winter, my mother knitted me special gloves so that they covered everything. At school, I was also looked at as an alien, but by that time, I was used to such views. I had some advantages in household chores. I could sweep the yard without even bending down. I could wash dishes while standing at the sink and at the same time reach the table where we had eaten. That is, I took a minimum amount of steps to the object to get it. Other than that, I was uncomfortable. I often cried because of complexes and asked my mother why I was like this and if I could somehow shorten my limbs. But my mother said that I was just special and should be proud of it. But I was not proud. I was embarrassed for my arms, which I could almost without bending down tie my shoelaces with, pick up a fallen thing, wipe the dust from the upper shelves, without standing on my toes. It all annoyed me. Well, when I grew up and became a teenager, my problems became even more. I remember how my classmates were going to go to a party where there was a strict dress code. Girls had to be in dresses. Since no dress matched my arms, I had to look for one with open sleeves. Can you imagine what I looked like? Like a clown. My mother gave me a beautiful hairstyle, bought shoes and a purse. But when I arrived at the party, all eyes were on me, where I should have felt almost like a queen. But when my classmates saw my arms and that I had come in a dress for the first time, I just attracted attention. The girls giggled in the background, whispering and calling me an orangutan, and the boys told me not to get upset. But you must be good at climbing trees and picking bananas for yourself. They laughed. Then they took a picture of me and posted the photo online. I ran away that night in tears. I wanted to disappear or someone to get rid of me. It was terrible. And suddenly, an idea popped into my head. In a fit of emotion, I ran to my grandparents. I knew they weren't expecting me. My parents and I visited them very rarely, and they hardly played with me. I burst into their house screaming that it was all because of their curse, and if it wasn't for them, I would be living happily. Those dumbfounded old people tried to calm me down and called my parents to pick me up. After that incident, I lay in bed for several days. I didn't want to do anything and I didn't want to see anyone. About three days later, someone rang the doorbell at our house and my mother thought it was my grandmother. Who knows, they might have a guilty conscience. She opened the door and came up to my room. There's a guy calling you, my mother said, disheveled, in a terrible state, I barely got up and went to the corridor, where I saw a guy. He was good-looking, a little taller than me, and, oh no, how is that possible? He had the same long arms as me. I couldn't believe my eyes. It turns out that he found me on the internet thanks to photos distributed by my classmates. It was amazing. My parents and I talked to him for probably hours. He said that he was also born the same as me and never considered it a flaw. On the contrary, he used his gift in every possible way. That's what he called it. I cried so much that night. Just the thought that there was a person like me in the world made me so happy. His name was Eric, by the way. We became friends, and he also taught me how to direct my gift in the right direction. We started playing basketball together funny, isn't it? But it really worked. Although our height was not quite high, there were so many advantages to our arms. All the teams wanted us on their team. From that moment on, my whole life changed for the better. And, by the way, my grandmother still came with an apology. Even after 14 years, it's better late than never. So, friends, if you have some kind of defect, think about it. Maybe it's a gift.